this online video guide to help you revise for the Mozart Requiem. The plan for today is that we're going to have a listen to sections of the piece. As we're listening to it, you will see information about the piece appearing in the centre of the screen. You will also see on the bottom there is a guide to the structure which we're moving and changing as appropriate. I would suggest that as you're listening to the piece, you have a copy of both your notes and also a copy of the annotated score to hand as well, so that you can follow them whilst watching the video. If you're ready, let's make a start. So here you can hear the mournful cantabile theme being played by the bassoon, answered in the basset horn. You can also hear the restless string accompaniment as well. Next up are the trombones, here they come. So this is significant because we know Mozart uses trombones sparingly, usually only employing them for special events, so for example the statue music and Don Giovanni. So their inclusion in this score is particularly noteworthy, especially as this is the only time during this movement which the trombones play. Meanwhile, the choir are about to enter with a fugal entry led by the basses. If you look at your score, you'll see that the bass and the alto are singing the same line, but a bar apart. And the tenor and the sopranos are singing the same line, but a bar apart, and also a fifth higher. So there's a good example of word painting coming up as we move to a major tonality um, and the choir sing and let eternal light shine upon them, which is coming up now. So we're now in the middle section, which is a soprano solo. You can hear that the melody is very simple with a small range, and then it's almost hymn-like. The orchestral accompaniment is also in canon as well. Note the dotted rhythms which you can hear in the accompaniment. These are reminiscent of a French overture and linked to a feeling of majesty. So we're now in a two-bar link, which takes us to our closing section. 
In this two bar link, Mozart used the material which is used already, specifically first of all the theme from the start which is played in the cellos, which you can see circled there in orange, also a semiquavy theme which came later on which is played in the bassoon that you can see circled up there. Let's have a listen to it. So we now arrive at the closing section and this is where Mozart reintroduces material from the start. He does this by reusing two themes which we're going to call theme 1A and theme 1B which we've heard earlier on. Let's have a look at these two themes which are used in a double fugue. First of all in the bass and the tenor parts you can see I've circled the entries in green so first of all in the bass part and then secondly in the tenor part as well. Um, this is called theme 1A, it's the theme that we heard right at the start of the piece. Secondly, also what we're going to call theme 1B, which is in the alto and soprano parts. You can see I've circled it there in red. This is the semiquavy theme, which we've heard earlier on as well. Um, it comes in first of all in the alto part and comes in also just off screen in the next bar in the soprano part as well. These parts are also doubled in the orchestra as well, and so the texture has changed. The tenor and bass parts are doubled in the bassoon line, whilst the soprano and alto parts are doubled in the basset horn part as well. Let's have a listen to that. So this section has been more heavily orchestrated than previously and also has a fanfare-like accompaniment. We then have a softer, simpler, and more reflective homophonic texture to finish. Note that it ends on an imperfect cadence supported by the brass and the timps. So the imperfect cadence obviously leads into the next section, which is the Kyrie, which follows. We're going to look at that in a separate video. However, just before we finish, we're just going to recap quickly on the two main themes that we've heard so far, which are theme 1A and theme 1B. First of all, theme 1A, which is the one that we heard right at the start, which looks and sounds like this. Secondly, also theme 1B, which is the semiquaver passage which appears at various times, which looks and sounds like this. Well, that's about it for now. If you'd like more information, you can have a look on our blog page, which is currently on the screen at the moment. If you have a look on the Year 12 Revision blog and scroll down to Day 8, you will find the relevant information which goes with this video. If you'd like to try some practice questions, do send me an email. My email address is on the blog. The plan for the next video is that we're going to carry on by looking at the Curie. Bye for now.